This is our zoo, Mountain Spirit, and I'm here in Belize. I want to start off by giving a shout to my beautiful family and uh, my international family. Nigeria, Ghana, Jamaica, South Africa, Trinidad, the United States, of course, my family all over Belize. Um, if I missed you, uh, give me a holler. You're all included. So every morning I wake up, I want to share my garden with you. I come outside and I say, wow, I should have shared this moment. But then I either <laughs> don't have my camera with me or something else happened. But today I said, I'm going to share with you no matter uh, what the situation is. So here we are. It's a little bit overcast. It's not the ideal um, sunny day. Uh, but it's cooler. It's um, much nicer to be out here. I don't feel like so burnt uh, by the sun. So I wanted to show you um, some progress that's been going on. Also thank the pollinators. Uh, I was very concerned about the garden because it's so dry. Um, and I wasn't sure which plants were going to make it and which ones weren't. But I'm happy to show you. Um, the ones that have. And I'm going to start with my favorite, uh, which is the the indigo that's been doing really, really well. Even had a, a soil shortage. But look how nice, nice he is. And other little family members have come along. But I want to show you the big mama, the big mama. And on the way we have the, uh, the vegetable insulin one. This one's struggling, but it's coming along. I'm going to put more soil in there. Oh yeah, uh, you wanted to see how the uh, calabash is doing, right? Look at that. And I even have some new leaves coming in. So you know he's happy you know he's happy and the little guy that had been chopped down he's coming back too it's amazing how much uh, some new soil around the plant can do it makes such a difference look how big he is we're gonna get some calabash from him um, quite soon ah now what i do here i don't really have a compost heap but i take my um organic material, you know, some eggshells, some leftover pulp, some mango skin. Yes, yeah, all that organic stuff that I have left from my garden and I just throw it in the bed and that's kind of how I make all the beds so that they can survive uh, this drought here. And my Artemis, my silver queen also has new growth. Look how beautiful. And Look at the new babies. That's how you know they're happy and they're gonna do well. They're gonna survive. All these beautiful new babies in there. This is uh, in the mug mugwort family. It's a mugwort, but it's the variety that we have out here. Now I wanna show you what I've been doing is, like you see all of this growth here. I've been cleaning up around the bed so that there's no competition for the little bit of water that we do get. So I've been pulling up the weeds, just getting down on my knees every morning and, and pulling them up. I have them in this little pile here. Uh, all these little guys, they give too much competition. So here's, this is a yellow pea, like what we make doll out flower from so I'll be cleaning up around it so he can stand alone as I've done with these here and you see how they all came in so I'm gonna dig them up and separate them put them in separate plants uh, but you see how they've been struggling and suffering these are marigolds which are really hardy they survive almost anything but they haven't been doing good here we're also in great competition with the ants who are also farming. This is my job.
jackass bitters, the Nasiabi, which also called Tres Puntas, one, two, three, which means three points. He's not doing so good. And no matter how much water I give him, he's just not uh, really liking this spot. So I'm gonna have to trim him down and change his location. And I think you know this guy. This is a stick of Damiana. Damiana, I have a full video on the Damiana plant on the Arzu Mountain Spirit channel that you can look at and learn so much from this plant. This is a kind of aphrodisiac. It's a beautiful healer. It relaxes uh, the body. You can also uh, smoke this. Uh, if you are a smoker, you can kind of lessen the impact of smoke damage by introducing some dry Damiana leaves into your smoke mix or into your pipe blend. He's gonna get bigger, it has a beautiful yellow flower uh, that comes, but I'm quite surprised that um, this one has made it and we're gonna keep observing it. And of course, the uh, even the cactus is struggling, but uh, looks like the cactus pear is gonna be okay. Here's another jackass bitters that didn't make it. But the fun part is over here. You see how I've been cleaning the edges, keeping it. <laughs> hey, hi. Yeah, I'm a bit tired today. <laughs> Good morning. The land never gets tired of giving us stuff though. Look, it's a little bit bigger. And again, I'm amazed and surprised at how much fruit I'm getting from um, this watermelon vine. Really, really surprised. And grateful, of course. Look, And it looks like they're going to make it. This one here <laughs> almost sneaked by me. And let me get on the other side so you can get a better view. See? He made it. Oh. Pollinators did come. Always glad. I'm so happy to see you too. Look at that. And again, these are all black seed watermelons. We don't grow anything that's seedless and we don't encourage the consumption of anything that's seedless. Look at this guy here. This one, so fat. <laughs> and we got a big jumble here. This one gave me a little tiny baby here that just got started. But then we got this big guy over here. Yeah. And another surprise was this one because he climbed all the way out of the bed and decided to grow here. And there's more coming. And this is only since the pollinators have decided to come out and help uh, this one also has a new baby here. Now, I know you're wondering what, this is an amaranth, you're wondering what this is. I'm gonna give you progress on that as it grows. This is an edible plant. I'm gonna talk about him another time. Look at you, look at this guys. See, there's a pollinator there. I'm trying not to upset him. Busy, 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 really busy. And there's some others that are trying to make it, like this one, trying. I don't know about this climate change. Uh, it's really visible here, becoming very, very, very evident. So I've had to weed out 
the grasses and other plants to eliminate the competition for the water. And the moringa trees, they do take water, but what they will do is also keep moisture in the soil by providing some shade. This moringa, this one seems to be surviving. This one's making it. And I think it's advantages that it has this little bush, which I still don't know what it is, but the butterflies love it. Uh, and it's giving it a little bit of shade. And it doesn't compete that much for uh, moisture. Now, when, when you have watermelons, you have to have other flowers to attract pollinators around because the vine isn't always flowering. See, this one keeps seeking and seeking its space so that it can shoot some fruit. So we got new, new flowers coming by. We have new watermelons coming in on this one. Here's another little guy. They, they don't escape me. Let me show you. There you go. And I don't know. This one seems to be struggling. I'm going to have to put some straw underneath it. And my little pollinators are busy. I tell you, they really don't like it that much when I come out here and start nosing up in their space. And then these are my pride here. They're still a little waxy, so they're not ready. They won't be ready for harvesting for a while. I just keep watching them because it's hard to tell when they will be ready again with climate change and the weather being so extreme. We just have to stay in touch with nature and keep observing everything. You see how dry the soil is. This one hasn't really shot anything yet. It seems to, it keeps trying, but it's like it's shooting blanks. And this one just has not grown. And it's the same age as the other ones. You see the difference that it makes. I have some uh, marigold that's also struggling, but the marigold is really keeping the soil together and um, just keeping it together until it's ready for the planting of something else. Oh, I'm competing with the ants here. So this is the basil, the common basil. Now basil seed is so nutritious. It's so good. We use the, um, the seeds when they're still a little bit white on the inside. I can't get one out with one hand, but if you, Go in the basil, you get a seed. We would take that one seed and, uh, and put it in our eyes. It's a cure for pink eye or any, or any, you know, eye infection. It's the basil seeds. It's in there somewhere. But when uh, people come and I visit, I give them a a sample of it and it feels really good in your eye when you put the seed it's a teeny teeny tiny flat seed so it's not irritating well when you come <laughs> you'll experience it but you see how even the basil is struggling but I'll show you a healthier version on the other side where it gets some shade so it's behaving a little bit differently On this side, it gets shade from the house. So this is what the basil looks like on this side. And aren't we fortunate today? Look what I found. I found a Damiana. Didn't know he was here. Did not know you were here. So happy to see you. I'm gonna pull the grass from around it. That's one of the things we're doing now where Instead of digging up the plant, which was a habit, 
when you find a really nice plant, you dig it up and you put it in a pot or you put it in a location that would be ideal. But we can't do that anymore. With the uh, severity of climate change and all of these unknowns, what we do is when we find the plant doing well, uh, we just build a shrine around it. Just pull the weeds out from around it since that's where the plant is showing you that it likes to grow. It's another Damiana. So we just pull the weeds around it and celebrate its existence and give it its space to grow. Look, there's a whole bunch of them. Here's another Damiana. It looks like I'm gonna get Damiana. But you see where it's growing next to? This is a sugar cane. This is where we make sugar from, sugar cane juice. I threw a couple of pieces there that someone gifted me and it seems to be doing okay. Sugar cane is, is a survivor. It's a survivor. And it'll grow quite big. That's the sugar cane. There's another piece over there. My cats brought over their leftover crab. <laughs> So that's their crab and their chicken bones. That's where they're keeping them. <laughs> you hear my birds? <laughs> Remember the name? Look at him. He's really kicking. Yes, to disguise us. He's a fighter. He's gonna do just fine. He's bending with the wind so as not to fight with it. Ay. These are some Lipia albus. I'm telling you, I'm so relieved to um, find the plants doing so well. Because I do despair. It does um, upset me sometimes when I see them not doing well. And now this guy, I, I gotta admit to you, I have no idea who he is. I, he looks like an amaranth, he looks like a callaloo, but it has all these thorns in it I have to be careful because I've stepped on it a few times. I mean, some really big pointy thorns. And I didn't know anything about a thorny callaloo, but he's in there mixed in with the grass. So if you know what this plant is, let me know, share it with me. You can help me out with that. There's um, a tree called a trumpet tree. And it's uh, very nice medicinal. It grows really easily. It always comes with ants. This one just grew in my pile here, in my soil pile. And so I'm, I'm letting him grow. He seems to be uh, coming in real strong. If you see his, his little trunk there, looks almost bamboo-ish like. Very common in the rainforest. I haven't really seen many of them here. And I think because this soil was brought to me from the jungle, from the rainforest, the seed or the planting material came in there and he, he just grew. So I just have to keep giving him water. It's, it's hard to keep them hydrated. And uh, we haven't had rain in a while. Really looking forward to having some rain right now. But there you are. <laughs> I want to take you to the other side with me. Check on the other guys. And you know what? It's not polite to do this without showing you the periwinkle. You have to see the periwinkle. You have to stop. They have no aroma. <laughs> you have to stop and smell the flowers, they say but we're just gonna stop and look at them. These guys started with a tiny, tiny little stick like this size. I put it here, we say about six months ago, and it just keeps giving and giving and giving. So today I'm gonna prune it and put some more sticks in the ground. This is a periwinkle. That's the white one we use for uh, medicine for diabetes. It's another insulin regulator balances blood sugar. Just a basic tea from it, nothing fancy. Periwinkle doesn't require a whole lot of fancy preparation. But it's giving me that nice bush, huh? 
And here's the big indigo. It's hard to believe, right, that this green leaf, just the green leaves, produce a blue dye, a deep, deep blue dye. So the, the blue is in there. It's in there. It's in those green leaves. Nature is so fascinating. Yeah. Okay, but I do have a surprise for you. Um, yesterday, when I was walking around, I went to make sure that the um, soursop tree was hydrated. And then um, just cleaning up around here. Oh Lord, it looks like the cat had kittens. Another litter of kittens, my goodness. Look at her. See? This is her third litter, like in one year. Lord, woman, stop it. <laughs> okay, here's what happened. I came in here to make sure that the soursop tree, this is Anona Morikata, and then I looked up there and saw that. I don't know if you could see the close up, try to get you another angle, but I actually have a fruit. There's a fruit up there. This is as high as I could go. And I saw a bunch of other fruits. Let me see. Show you a forming fruit. There's one. Bet you hadn't seen that before, right? We seldom get a view of a sour sap fruit like this. And look, here's another teeny tiny one coming along. This is just made me so excited. This one has not borne fruit in a long, long time. I think it never bore fruit. Wait, I just gotta make it across because I see, look, we're getting fruit. Now you're coming through, <laughs> you're coming through the bush with me. I'm taking you through the bush, trying to get you a better view. Ah, there it is. There it is. Okay. Can you see that? Come on, guys. Can you see that? Yeah. There's another little one. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get a bunch of fruit. Looks like we're gonna get it. Now, these leaves make a wonderful tea, very flavorful tea, and uh, it has cancer. Okay, now the other day someone gave me a pataya, so I just put it in here. And it looks like it's a little bit dry, so I'm gonna, even patayas need, need watering. Looks kind of like a San Pedro to me. But the guy said it's a pataya, so I'm going to believe him. <laughs> and you might as well have a look. If you've never seen the wild yam, these are the roots that um, I cut from another mature plant. And I planted them. I, I cut away the vine so that they can shoot their own brand new leaves. So we're, we're going to keep an eye on these and see how they go. This is the um, Dios Correa Vilosa which is on the list of endangered plants uh, in the world. So I really pray that they, um, they bear, and please pray with me. So this is the wild yam, the one that was used to create the um, birth control um, way, way back in the early 19, well, mid 1900s. This is what they used and they harvested it so much that um, it went into near extinction. For a while it was extinct, but some were found uh, still in Mexico. And we have been, wherever we find them, us indigenous healers, we just keep a piece of it and we're cultivating them ourselves. Um, just for you to have a look. 
And so that is my sharing for the day. <laughs> Thank you for walking the garden with me. Uh, we're gonna do this again. But tomorrow I'll have a, a little bit more stuff for you. Uh, I didn't I didn't share what was going on on the other side in the in the yellow bins. Some really wonderful stuff is going on there. Um, thank you so much for spending the morning with me. Enjoy your day. Love, 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 love. And I'm gonna send you a kiss with my right hand. Mm. <sighs> Bye. <laughs>